Look, guys, this looks like Blair Tandon will not be confirmed. That's what it looks like. After a bumpy transition and the impeachment trial, just nine of Mr. Biden's cabinet nominees have been confirmed. The pace of confirmations is lagging compared to similar points in previous presidencies. Just today, two committees canceled votes on Neera Tandon, the president's pick for budget director. West Virginia Democratic Senator Joe Manchin says he won't support her, citing years of sharply partisan comments on air and online about members of both parties. I think there's no secret she is lacking the votes right now. She's working hard to try to get the votes. White House officials tell CBS News they're sticking with her. But in the 50-50 Senate, Democratic defections can be fatal for a Biden pick. So Tandon now requires GOP support. It's a numbers game, right? It's a matter of getting one Republican to support her nomination. We're continuing to do that outreach. Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski could be that one, but tonight says she's not yet made a decision. Tandon had deleted more than a thousand tweets before being nominated, but late tonight, a newly surfaced tweet shows she'd even attacked Murkowski in the past. Ironically, there are those who are defending their attendant. Yes, they are defending their attendant. Listen, guys, I did a cl- I did a, a segment Friday on this issue with their attendant. For, just Friday, we talked about their attendant, her issues, the issues that you can have with their attendant. You can look at policy. You don't even have to look at her bad tweets. Though, bad tweets are enough for many other people in our society to get canceled. Yeah, like they had no problem canceling what a what's her face person who said what's a call it thing on Twitter, losing their job. Neil Tan's not even losing a job. She's trying to get a new job. And you know what happens? You know what happens if you go look for a job and they find out you got a bunch of negative crap in your social media? You don't get the job, Johnson. That's right. Welcome to the age of social media. Welcome to the age of Google. Okay, so what happens to regular people every day? Every day. Every day there's somebody, a graphic designer, a a, a little league coach, or or a crossing guard who's not, well, in the time before COVID-19, okay? Okay? Those are all jobs you got to go places and be around people. But once upon a time, people would go, not too long ago, a year ago, people had jobs where they interacted with the public. In those jobs that they interacted with the public, there was a screening process. Part of that screening process was looking at your social media profiles. Who amongst us is so daft that they don't understand that's a regular thing? That's not a Democratic thing. That's not a Republican thing. And some of those decisions to hire you or extend an opportunity to you would hinge or could could be hampered by your social media history. Because it says something about who you were. If you were calling, if you were calling gay people derogatory terms, or if you were using the N word, or if you were, I don't know, talking about you want to overthrow the government and neo Nazi stuff or whatever. Okay, I don't know. If you did unsavory things, or well, you said unsavory things a lot, it could come back to haunt you. We all know that there are services to wipe all of that. Back to their attendant. How is it? Progressive organizations like the Justice Democrats are defending their attendant for facing the same ridicule others receive on a daily basis that we've received. And then to mock it as if it's nothing. Then to sugarcoat her garbage behavior. Now let's move. And look, and, and I, I don't want to even keep it solely on the social media Twitter postings. But everyone else is leaning into all the policy stuff, and that's not working either. Yeah, they're not, that's not working either. When we look at the policies, like, oh, she was down for not only bombing the hell out of Libya, but stealing all this oil. As if that's a cool thing to do. We got a we got a failed state with its open slave trafficking. Because America tampered with Libya and overthrew Gaddafi, and you make jokes about it, you and Hillary, Hitlery, okay? But no, say you overlook that. Say you don't care about people being sold as slaves in Libya and what kind of jokes she made about that. What about the fact that she is against uh, entitlements? And I, and I hate that word. That's some DC speak I picked up. She's against Social Security and Medicare and talked about cutting those. 
She had she gave the same spell that Biden gave. Well, we're going to look at everything, put everything on the table. And since I don't use it and I don't have a need for it because I'm rich, bitch, I'll just say we should cut that stuff. Yeah, because it pertains to the poor people. Yeah, cut it if we need to. We'll put it on. A, that was their attendant. And if that's not enough for you, if that, if that doesn't rock your boat, Neil Tandon had a, it was a woman in her in her organization in her own dealings within her her own pack, the Center for Collecting Money from Corporations. Um, there was a woman that was complaining of sexual harassment by a male counterpart within the organization. And what did Neil Tandon do? Did she befriend the woman? Did she did she service the woman as far as protecting the woman's rights? Did she stand up for the woman? Did she defend the woman against the man who 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 these allegations were against? No, she outed the woman. She outed the woman in a closed session. And then she went after those who called her out for outing her. That's what your feminist leader did. For all those women going, well, she'd be the first Asian woman to lead this, to direct this organization. Yeah, well, that's debatable if she's good enough to do that, okay? So, like, all those things, you stack them all up. Well, yeah, there's a lot of reasons why you might not want near attending. And then you lop on top of it. She's a horrible individual who said a lot of horrible things to a lot of people. And, frankly, I don't like the fact she blocked me back in 2016 for commenting on a myriad of those things as I just listened to you. Because that's what she does. <sighs> Now, I haven't said all that stuff. I okay? got that all out the way. Joe Manchin is standing between her and her getting confirmed. And as I stated earlier, guys, this ain't about intentions. We all know that Joe Manchin's intentions are to, to grab power for himself. It's the same guy, Joe Manchin, that voted for William Barr and other horrible picks for Donald Trump. He basically massaged Donald Trump's feet at every turn. And, and, and yes, that was Joe Manchin. That is Joe Manchin. Joe Manchin, the, the Senate, senator from West Virginia, appeasing a lot of West Virginians who like Trump and also being a cruddy politician. That's what it does. And, yes, I agree. It's it's the height of hypocrisy for this guy to pretend like he gives a damn about Neil Tandon's tweets when Trump had the most uh, most demoralizing, aggressive, uh, uh, bullying tweets on the internet. He held the title. Takashi six nine it was like, damn, I wish I could be like Trump at this. I mean, to, to act like a you know, to act like a bully online, to call people out and to call them names, it, it almost became like the the name Trump is almost synonymous with that. It's like, damn, you pulling the Trump dog, you getting real Trump with it. So for that guy who voted for to appoint Donald Trump's appointees, or to approve Donald Trump's appointees, it is rich for that guy to now look at Neera Tannen and say, no, Neera Tannen's not good enough. No, Neera Tannen, I can't, with good conscience, vote for Neera Tannen. I can't bring myself to do it. And that is the height of hypocrisy. It's disgusting. It's obviously transparently self-serving. He's a scumbag for it. And at the end of the day, I don't care. No, I don't care. I don't care why he's doing it. I just know Neera Tannen's not a good choice. I don't want her controlling anything in my government. And since we the people don't get to vote, unfortunately, sometimes it'll be somebody like Joe Manchin that gets done what the hell you need done. And look, I realize there's a political movement to this. I realize that Neil Tanner is a very powerful person. I remember back in 2016, there were people, people like Benjamin Dixon and others were saying, oh man, don't do this, don't tweet that, don't say these things, we can't have these arguments. Neil Tanner can hear us. Neil Tanner can see our tweets. This, no bullshit. Ben actually said that to me in an argument we had. 
because Lyra Tannen is a bully. And she, 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 she would make sure that your organization would not get funding and she would try to hurt. And at the time, they were trying to build something. So this is the thing, guys. There are a lot of people that are afraid of Lyra Tannen. She's a very powerful woman, similar to Hillary Clinton. But see, I don't need Lyra Tannen. I'm already on the outside. You know, any of those opportunities, they'll never hit my doorstep. They never have. They always ricochet and go to other people. So I got nothing to lose. And I'm telling you, Nira Tannen is not the person we want because it's Nira Tannen. Not because she's a woman, not because she's Asian. It's because who she is as an individual. She chose to be this person. Similarly, I chose to be the person I am. A person that would throw caution to the wind and call out Nira Tannen loudly and boldly without a second person sitting here to say the opposite to make it seem like we could be balanced. You know, to actually stick my neck out and say how I feel instead of saying, well, what do you think? I think this and some people think that and other people think these things and could you tell us what you think, Nina? And then no one calls out or realizes the fact that the person that you're looking for your news and independent media doesn't even have the balls to have a position on anything until they're sure the position won't hurt them. And I have to be the person that's the opposite. Well, I pick a position before I decide or give a damn about what people think about it. And that's the same way Neil Tannen has been. But so she has to, just as I've had to, sleep in the bed you made. Yeah, that's your bed. Sleep in it. Neil Tannen has been toxic to so many people. Her politics has sucked, and she has proven time and time again she is not the person that we want managing our money. This person closed the doors of her organization because they were trying to unionize, fired everybody, then reopened them just to get rid of a union or something like that. It's horrible. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Heard this for the first time today, like, my God. And was this really a conversation we're having? Is if Dara Tannen is, a, is progressive or not? Hell no, she's not progressive. Because she's brown, she's progressive? Or because she's a person of color, she's progressive? Come on, Johnson. That's as disgusting and, and racist as anything else I've heard. What you gonna say next? She know, she must know how to play basketball because she's got some melanin in her skin or or or, or whatever. What? She must know the biggie lyrics. What what are you saying? Just because she's a certain pigment, did that mean she's progressive? No. It's some, being progressive is something you earn through action. It's something you de demonstrate through track record. So anyway, at the end of the day, look, guys, here, here it is. I understand why people, why people are hesitant to throw their attention under the bus. And I don't like it. And I don't like the fact that Bernie Sanders is out front throwing their attention under the bus. And I don't like the fact that Joe Manchin is the one doing it. And then someone else I don't like, Susan Collins is also, along with Joe Manchin, not going to vote for her. Near Tannen. And I don't like that these two people that I find particularly despicable are getting done what I need to get done. But as a pretty much, come on guys, as a powerless voter in a country full of a sea of corruption, I gotta take the wins where I can get them. And reluctantly, I take this win. And just as Democrats and other people Take a long, long, hard look in the mirror, man. Ladies and man, men and ladies, Johnsons, and make a decision whose team you're on. Because if you're having a reluctance or you have a hard time choosing between us, your values, and near attending because it's convenient, then you're playing on the wrong team. You're not on the right team. You're on their team. And when the time comes for you to do fundraising, Similar to me and similar to Nera Tannen. Lay in the bed. You made it. Now sleep in it. Don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe. Don't be fooled by corporate media talking heads misleading the people. 
Get your news and information from an entity that keeps it real. Tim Black. Tim Black is the host of The Tim Black Show. Independent news that leaves you informed, inspired, and sometimes entertained, but always in the know. Go to TimBlackTV.com and sign up today. The Tim Black Show is news for people who can't stand the news. See you there.